period. Anyway, folks, this is a big week. This is a big, and, and it's a big week for Obamacare, and that means the media is going to spend as much time this week on the anniversary of the assassination of JFK as they can. The assassination of JFK will happen on the 22nd, which is Friday. And you're going to see the opportunity, they're going to take occasion of this anniversary to just totally blanket coverage on the JFK 50th anniversary, which is a big deal. But it will also provide the drive-bys and everybody else an opportunity to ignore Obamacare. And there's some there major cancellations are yet to happen with Obamacare. Obama and and his minions are still trying to downplay what they're calling eh, it's just the five percent. Here we're just talking about the individual marketplace that's being canceled and. Uh, you know, you got insurance uh, examiners and companies uh, being brought to the White House to try to. I'm sure Obama's promised them a bailout. I, you know he has. You know he's bringing these insurance guys in, and he's promising them a bailout. That's how these guys work. They're going to lose money left and right by reinstituting policies that they had canceled. Policies which remain illegal, by the way. Just the regime isn't going to enforce them for one more year. But they're illegal. The plan that you liked, the doctor that you had that you liked, and all that. Don't, if, if your insurance company is able to give you that plan back, they're going to lose money. And I, I don't know that it's happened. I mean, I can't. I'm not sitting here saying conclusively. But Obama's bringing these insurance execs up to the White House. So what do you think he's promising them? You know he's going to bail them out. I mean, everything's riding on this. Cover their losses or what have you. The question remains... Are they going to be able to actually reinstate your old policy? I mean, they have bureaucratic snafus that they have to uh, navigate as as well. But look, while everybody is focused on just this, the private insurance market, uh, ladies and gentlemen, mentioned to you last week, Betsy McCoy had an analysis, and she said, if you if you think this is it, you're wrong. The tip of the iceberg has barely even been reached. Because beginning next year, everybody in an employer-provided plan will get their cancellation. In fact, you may. In fact, I know people who have already started receiving their cancellation notices. My cousin, who lives out in Los Angeles... I got this obscenity-laced email from him on Thursday or Friday last week. He's in his early 30s, and he's just fit to be just got he just got canceled. And all of these employer-based plans, they're next. Everybody's starting to write about that now. Even the Politico is writing about it. But they're no. I take it back. Everybody's not. The Politico is sort of alone. Betsy McCoy is. Andy McCarthy has a piece about it today at National Review. We spoke about it last week. And now we're talking about not 15 million people as Obama is talking about. What, what's the we're, we're talking about 156 million Americans who get their health insurance through their jobs. 156 million Americans and the lion's share of those plans are going to be canceled. Look. It's in the Federal Register. The regime knew and stated that 93 million Americans were going to lose their plans. Pelosi, you know, speaking of twisters, hurricanes, Pelosi trying to defend Obamacare and her comments about she was on Meet the Depressed yesterday with David Grin. Did you see this? She's... She's recycling this. She she stood by her famous remark about having to pass the bill to see what's in it. She is still saying that when people see the bill, they will like what's in it. In the midst of them getting canceled, in the midst of people losing the insurance they liked, after having been lied to, after having been defrauded. By the way, I mentioned my buddy Andy McCarthy. This is the second piece this piece at National Review Online, which, uh, what's the date of this? Today. The second piece that he has written on the fact that this is a criminal fraud. Anywhere in the private sector, the people that do this would be prosecuted. Most likely by federal 
prosecutors. And this is, it is a profound fraud. And it is, um, if, the, if, the political, it, well, if the politics were such in this country, it would be impeachable. I mean, you can't proceed with impeachment if the uh, political circumstances aren't there for it. And they're probably not. Um, in, in which case, nobody would have the stomach for it. On the on the Republican side, but nevertheless, it is a is a it's a major fraud. It's not just a lie. And Andy makes a case in the second time here in his piece today. It's called Obama's five percent con job, and the point is that the five percent is not even the five percent. Avik Roy uh, is a is a scholar at one of the think tanks, and he says the individual market is eight percent, not five percent. The individual market is 8% of health insurance consumers, and that is 25 million people, not 15. And his point is the president can't even be honest about that. But it is the next shoe to drop next year. Cancellation notices will start going out soon. Employer-provided plans are the next to be canceled because they are illegal. They will not fit within the new mandates that Obamacare has. It's not just the individual market. Remember we talked about this last week with the uh, aid of the Betsy McCoy piece. Now, the Kennedy assassination, it's fascinating. I spent a lot of time last night. I remembered something vaguely. But I couldn't put my finger on it. Well, what I, it, was, it was a piece that I had read about how the Kennedy assassination actually caused American liberalism to do a 180 and, and assume the positions on issues that they have today. And I searched and searched, and I finally found the source of this. And it, it's a fascinating theory. We've spoken about it before, but I just couldn't remember where it's a book that was written back in 2007, I believe, Camelot and the Cultural Revolution by Jim Pearson. The book is not available as an e-book. It's available in paperback or hardcover, but there are various summaries of it, I found. It's a, and I remembered, once I found that, I remembered... Is that his 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 theory? And I'll spend a little bit more time on this. But his theory is the left just couldn't accept the fact that a communist had killed their president, and he makes though JFK was not a liberal in the sense that liberals are liberals today. He was a nationalist. He believed in America. He believed in American military power. He believed in tax cuts. He believed in. American exceptionalism he believed in all these things that liberals used to, in their own way, believe in. He's always a, oh, a fervent anti-communist, fervent anti-communist. And that's the, the left of the day could not believe that a communist. They, in fact, there are quotes from liberals of the day back in 1960, 61, 62, who openly said the biggest amazing how things don't change, folks, is that the biggest threat to America came from the right wing of the Republican Party, back then epitomized by Joseph McCarthy. The biggest threat was not the Soviet Union. The biggest threat was not state-sponsored communism, wherever it was in the world. It was the Republican Party. It's amazing how things don't change. And when Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, and by the way, there's another aspect here that you just... You go to you, you touch on this at your own risk, but Kennedy's presidency at the time of his assassination was in dire straits. He was in deep trouble, and it was the, the, the Democrat Party was worried he would not win re-election. It was it, the whole Kennedy administration was in bad shape, and the whole construction of Camelot did not begin until after his death, and it was Jackie who did it. And the biggest, as Britt Hume said over the weekend, the biggest PR campaign in the history of the world began to recast JFK as Camelot, King Arthur, and and Washington in a way that it never was when Kennedy was actually president. But it all focuses on the fact that the left was just blown apart 
by the fact that a communist had pulled the trigger, Lee Harvey Oswald. And that is why they immediately began to blame Dallas for it. Right-wing nutcases, right-wing corporate executives, right-wing gun nuts, right-wing extremists in Texas. And it was the left that began to popularize all the conspiracy theories. It was the left that created all these conspiracy theories as to what had happened to Kennedy because they couldn't come to grips with the fact that a communist had pulled the trigger. They just couldn't. The communists, they were, they, were, they were more aligned with the communists around the world than they were with Republicans back then, which is the case today, by the way. And Pearson's point is that that was the turning point for liberalism. That is when they totally shifted and began to blame America for everything. They had no choice to protect the whole Camelot thing that Jackie was creating. And and to uh, and and to deal with the the unacceptable that a communist had killed the president, they then began tarring and feathering everything about America, American culture, American religion. Every that is when it began. That's Mister Pearson's theory, and it's uh, it's impressive. It has it has a lot of validity. So anyway, spending my time refamiliarizing myself with this. Some of uh, yesterday afternoon and last night, I actually stopped watching a football game to do this. That would have not happened. I mean, I would have done them both at the same time in the old days. But I actually turned the game off. I, it, who was it, anyway? Oh, it was four games late. I had the red zone on. I don't know, folks. That's a whole other subject. But... Um, the. the the game, the way it's being covered, reported on, um, just, I don't know. They're losing me, and I don't, I don't know if that means anything. I'm not going to extrapolate it beyond that. But it's just, I can see the handwriting on the wall. Anyway, that's what I did, turned it off. And started uh, digging into this Kennedy stuff, knowing full well that later in this week, if not sooner, they're going to start focusing on the uh, anniversary, 50 year, and the rebuilding of Camelot, the reimagining of it, how wonderful it was. The association of Obama with it will take place. I fully expect to see the Obama administration portrayed as... And the heir to Camelot. They tried that with Clinton, by the way. And uh, just, they had all the ingredients there, except Clinton got caught. JFK, when he got caught, nobody cared because it was with Marilyn Monroe. And they said, ooh, that's cool. And Clinton got caught with Monica, an intern, by a stained blue dress. And that was tougher to categorize as Camelot as opposed to Trailer Park. Which is what Carville was describing Clinton's women as anyway. So it's going to be an interesting week in that regard. But this theory of what turned the left against America. Now, I know many of you say, but wait a minute, Rush. You've said, and you may yourself believe, the left has always had problems with the American founding. That's true. But they always looked at themselves as... FDR in the New Deal, they looked at themselves as good for America. And they, they, were, they didn't mind piping up about how great America was because of them. And then the Kennedy assassination came, and they have been, if you stop and think about it ever since, they have been on the warpath to tear this country to shreds. And this guy's theory is it's simply because a left-winger shot a Democrat president. They just couldn't believe it. And they had to create in history the revision and lies, the idea that Kennedy was actually done in by a bunch of right-wingers in Texas and that they are the primary sponsors of all the conspiracy theories that are out there, not madcap extreme right-wingers. Let me take a break. Basically, somewhat sets the table. We'll continue. 
when we get back. Don't go.